Welcome to Hope and Resilience Podcast. I'm John Hitchens, and today we have a very special de- guest on today, Dr. David Bruton. Dr. Bruton, thanks for coming on. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. Well, let's uh, introduce you to the, our guest. Uh, I know a little bit about you because we've talked and done some research, but how about you give us a little uh, information on who you are, what you've been doing, and, and what you've been up to? All right. Yeah. Uh, my name is Dr. David Bloom Jr., uh, physical therapist and owner of Between the Lines Physical Therapy. Um, as of for one year, I've had my doctorate in physical therapy. Um, but prior to that, I played eight years in the NFL, seven with the Denver Broncos, have a Super Bowl ring and a Super Bowl loss. Um, played one year with the Washington Redskins. And then prior to that, played, with, uh, played at the University of Notre Dame and originally from Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, he, so he's uh, for the folks that are uh, uh, used to his homes. He's from our backyard, Dayton, Ohio, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we love to have you on. And uh, so let's uh, get into uh, one of my first questions I ask uh, usually at the end, but I want to uh, change things around today. I'll ask it at the beginning. If you have you seen the new Top Gun movie? Yes, yes, I have. So you, you know about call signs, right? So you know there's yes. there's Maverick and there's this and this. And so mine was Hitch. So uh, how about we're going to announce to the world today what your call sign is. So what, what are we going to use as a call sign? So I feel like I have two, and I'll, I guess I'll let you let you kind of decide. Okay. Um, there was the Brute, um, kind of like you used the first portion of your name, but also yeah. Ace because I was a special teams ace for the Denver Broncos. Ooh, so Ace is pretty cool. I mean, that has a lot of, yeah. uh, you know, uh, flight concerns with it. As an Ace, you get five yeah. kills, you're an Ace, so that would be cool. Yeah. Or Brute would be awesome. I like Brute Zero yeah, One. right. Because <laughs> that says a lot. <laughs> you're right. Right. I don't know. You, I, I think we'll take Brute Zero One. I like it better. I All think. right, Brute Zero right. One. That's I what like it is. I like it. All right, so you, I, I, we've talked a little bit about physical therapy. I, um, I love the people that do that. I ran one for several years, uh, a company that uh, had PTs, OTs. So tell me a little bit about what a PT does. What, what do you guys actually, what's your main job? Uh, honestly, the main job is to, in, is to improve overall quality of life, whether that's movement, whether that's uh, the psychological component, not in the sense of a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but movement is medicine. Movement uh, helps the body feel better, also resets the brain, helps the brain feel better, uh, addresses mood and things of that nature. So we're looking to improve strength, mobility, range of motion, um, performance, injury prevention. Pretty much we have a wide, wide. wide range of scope as long as, it, as, long as yeah. it's to benefit the, the person. Yeah, it's amazing what you guys all do and, and what you can do for people that are struggling with injury and stuff. So uh, obviously we're uh, Hiswell Homes and we deal with mental health. Uh, so tell me a little bit about how you, even though you didn't describe a lot there, what do you see as uh, some of the mental health side of your physical therapy business and what you do and what you've even experienced in your life? Um, you know, mental the mental health component is something to definitely – take into consideration whenever somebody comes in with an injury, something catastrophic, say they're during their senior year of high school or during the, towards the end of their playing career where they're trying to keep playing, but something just catastrophic happened, um, that can definitely weigh in on you. So as a PT, we're not just looking at the body. We're looking at this biopsychosocial model. So we're looking at biology. We're looking at psychologic, looking at the individual psychologically and socially, looking at all these different components because that makes up the person. You know, those outside influences play play a role in as far as how you rehab, how you think about yourself, how you view yourself. We have social media. I think that's a big thing right there in itself of how you potentially could see yourself because of how other people are reacting to what you post and things of that nature. So when when I look at somebody with coming in with an injury, it's like ask them how they feel. What what's their what's their expectations? You know, and explain to them if they're feeling down, how that can adversely affect their their PT, how that can adver- adversely increase time as far as their rehab, because you know the mind is a, one of the most powerful muscles, and it influences everything in the body. You know, everything starts from the mind down, and and if we if we have some type of hiccup in that mind, some type of weak spot in that mind, something that's weighing in heavy on that mind. We're going to see it manifest itself, not just in, in PT rehab, but we're going to see it manifest in life, in work, in family, 
in overall activity. So we, what we're trying to do is just make sure that person's the best version of themselves as far as what we can do in our legal scope. Wow, that's amazing. Now, a lot of people struggle with this. I know I did when I was in sports. And uh, we, we talk about an injury or we talk about whether it's actual a, um, uh, a uh, actual hurt and whether I continue to play or do I push through or what. We've talked a little bit uh, also about an experience you have I hope you, you bring in as well. So talk to me about those two differences uh, of where you see those play, interplay with my mind. As I'm trying to do this job, I want to do this job, how do those two things interact? So yeah, there's definitely there's definitely a difference between that hurt and injured. Hurt is there's something that doesn't feel right. There's some type of pain. There's some type of discomfort, but nothing that's causing you to miss time. An injury is something a little more severe where you're having to miss time, whether that's days, weeks, months, whether um, from ACL, concussion, shoulder tears, things of that nature. Um, that's that's what an injury for me is. And now. I, uh, to speak to my experience that we talked about a little bit, little bit ago, you know, I thought I was hurt, but I actually had an injury of a broken leg and played 70 plus snaps on that broken leg the year of our Super Bowl in 2015. So, yeah, I think there was some definite, definite mental toughness in that regard, right? So, um... And how that plays plays a role in it is mental toughness. Can you can you push through the hurt? Can you push through the hurt? And we know we've all heard that old adage: throw some dirt on it, rub some dirt on it. Pain is weakness leaving the body. You know all those all those sayings that you know you would hear as as a kid or in in the locker room or something along those lines. In that sense, it makes it it's kind of applicable because you are trying to just you know walk it off, shake it off, keep pushing through. You're just trying to be tough and work through that that pain, that hurt. Injuries is a whole different story. I don't think, you know, if somebody breaks their femur, I don't think they can just throw some dirt on it and walk walk on it, right? <laughs> they can't just keep, shake it off and keep going, right? Most so, people except so, for Mr. Bruton. Bruton probably could do that. Nah, but most people, I don't know about the femur. I think the femur is going to shut me down. <laughs> it's a little more serious. All right. So yeah. let's say I have that injury, okay? So I, I go in there and I have a catastrophic injury. And we've talked about all the physical things you do and you have all kinds of techniques to bring this person back. But a lot of times I've seen where people just want to give up. It's too much. It's too hard. How, what, what do you do to mentally get them to accept your training or tra accept your skill sets to help them now progress and actually grow and, and, and get back out there to the game? You know, uh, um, you, 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 you become their cheerleader. You become their motivator. You become somebody they can rely on, not just in the clinic, but some patients have a phone number if they want to reach out and they just need to know where they are, how they're progressing, they can do that. You become, because we are, we're essentially fighting for the same goal. Me and you are teammates. We are literally set forth a goal and this is what we're trying to get to. We got hiccups. We got every every appointment is a game, right? Like we let's try to win that game, but we may lose it. Ebbs and flows. We may lose that game, but just because we lost the game doesn't mean we can't get to the Super Bowl, right? Just because we lose a few weeks in a row doesn't mean we can't go on an eight eight zero run to end the season. So we we so I, I become a big cheerleader, and then also you know you kind of show them where they were prior and show them where they are now. So they have that motivational factor of seeing something. Some people just need to see that they are actually progressing, whether that's a video, whether that's their subjective score, whether that's, you know, you weren't able to walk, now you're able to walk, whether that's, you know, you were dizzy using virtual reality on a 40-mile-per-hour roller coaster, now you can do it at 60 miles per hour without any symptoms. Just seeing that progression is definitely a motivating factor as well. Yeah, that's to us as uh, we talk about a lot is that's just giving people hope. And, and that's not a, a just, that's an amazing thing that keeps them going and keeps them progressing. And so it, it, we talked a little bit about, you know, injury and, and making it through. And, and, but sometime in life, you know, all of us uh, get to a point, whether it's high school or college or professional sports, where you got to make a transition. And that, that can be a huge mental 
issue. How do you help them with that? How do you see people? What have you experienced in your life? What have you done? Where do you see that taking place? Because you actually made that transition. Uh, you, you know, you went yes, from the sir. Denver Broncos to being a doctor of physical therapy. So talk to me a little bit about transition because everybody hits it sometime in their life. Yeah, that's, that's the one thing, one thing that's guaranteed in athletics. That the sport will come to an end, right? At some point in time, that sport will come to an end. And what, what are you going to do outside of that sport? For me, I knew I always wanted to be a physical therapist, so I jumped in right away. I think my, I, got, I got put on IR in October of 2016, and then I was released December of 2016. And then I went right back into school January of 2017. So I, there was no, no. no time wasted. I, I got in right away. And my advice is just to find something that you love and passionate about and dive in. You know, um, we, as an athlete, we're kind of ingrained, at least I would think, hope you're ingrained if you're competing, to, to put your best foot forward, to always grind, to get 1% better, you know, to, 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 to just go out there and be the best version that you can be. Why is that limited to just athletics? Why can't that be the same in school if you go back to school? Why can't that be the same at, you know, as an engineer? Why can't that be the same as a pilot? You know, if, you, if that transition of sport becomes, uh, comes to, when it comes to an end, what else are you going to be able to entrench yourself? Don't lose yourself. Don't lose your identity because you're a, because you were an athlete, you know your identity is so much more than an athlete. Yeah. You're a hard worker. Yeah. You know your yeah. your discipline. You know you're you're capable of fighting through tough times and adversity. So there's all these life lessons that you learn with sports that you can apply in every other aspect of life. Yeah, that, that's awesome because everybody, like you said, it's going to happen. The sport usually doesn't last forever. You got to find something else. And, and they have skill sets that you talked about. Uh, being able to do all that well takes a lot of discipline. And so that just that in itself, a lot of people don't have that. But people that are athletes usually have that aspect and they can put that into almost anything they have a, a, a desire to do. Um, what do you think? You, we talked about the mental challenges. Uh, do you have cases where you've had mental challenges in your life and and what are your thoughts about that and how did you get through it if you had some you know i've had i've had mental challenges uh, quite a few times in my life um you know as a youth um my time in time in college with the birth of my oldest son and all the things that come with school whether that's class football i also had to work because you know i had to help provide for for my oldest at the time. So there's just a lot going on where, and where, you know, you, I contemplated, do I drop out of school? Uh, is this life for me? Dark, dark thoughts. And, you know, and it wasn't, that's not the only time that those thoughts have creeped into my head, but I've definitely sought out help outside of just the locker room, just somebody, a counselor or something that I could bounce what I'm feeling and just have somebody listen, have somebody maybe give me a response. You know, it, they don't necessarily have to have all the right answers just for me to be able to get something out. And I saw this therapist for four years and very, I was very frequent from once a week to, and then we ended up reducing it to once a month as I got, got, got a little older into my junior year, going into my senior year. So um, I, I would hope if you are struggling with some type of mental health, I would hope if anybody out there listening is struggling, you know, to find themselves or just feel weighed down because the life kicks rocks at you a lot. You know, if you're feeling down and stressed out and feeling anxious and depressed, do not think seeking for help is a weakness. And I think that's, that's the tough part, especially if you're in the military or especially if you're an, uh, an athlete, it's like, you don't want to be seen as some, you have some type of weakness in you, right? It's like you don't want to be seen as weak and vulnerable, but sometimes you have to be so you come out on the other side stronger, more resilient, and, and ready to conquer the world. That's awesome. And you use the words that we use, hope and resilience. And to us, resilience is the ability to ba uh, bounce back. And, and that's what reaching out and getting help does for you. And like you said, it, it, we get there's so much stigma out there about, you know, 
reaching out for help that you're weak. I mean, even the military, they, they talk about PTSD, where the D is disorder. So a lot of the guys that have that injury won't even go uh, talk to anybody because it says disorder. So they're trying to change the term to PTS, where it's just post-traumatic stress. And so the stigma is huge, and that's a big part of it. And when we get people like you, uh, the ability to speak out there and tell them it's okay, even for a, a professional athlete like yourself, uh, to reach out for help than it is for everybody. And that helps everyone make that decision to go find help. So I'm glad you said that and a lot of wisdom in what you said there. Um, what else, uh, if there's anything else, uh, what else have we covered that you would maybe l like to tell people before we go that you get a chance to, to emphasize? Is there anything at all that you would, uh, other things you might want to say to some uh, our audience? Um, I think the one thing I would like to see, uh, like to kind of get out there, especially based on the, the, the climate of our conversation is, you know, don't mistake mental toughness and mental health as the same thing. You know, they, they sometimes can coincide, but they are not the same thing. Mental, mental health, if you are feeling down, that's going to manifest in every aspect of your life. Mental toughness is being able to, to fight some of those adverse situations and keep, keep moving forward and keep pounding. But, you know, like I said earlier, sometimes, sometimes things just get tough. Sometimes you just get weighed down. Sometimes you just need to decompress and let it all out. So don't let the outside noise um, affect your ability to seek out help. Don't let it affect your overall mood. Just try to be better and try to be just try to stay grounded because mental health is a very serious issue that a lot of coaches in today's world need to need to keep in mind. Um, and hopefully more people understand because we see it. We see it manifest itself in Olympic athletes. We see it manifest itself in military. We see it manifest itself in students, you know, whether that's college, whether that's elementary. We see it. It is, it is a real thing, and we have to ha have a concentrated focus on helping instead of ridiculing and criticizing. That was awesome. And everything you've went over really is just great stuff. I think anybody that listens to this is going to learn a lot and have hopefully then the courage to go out, reach out to get help when they need it, uh, because it's a struggle that you, you, you don't fight alone. You, you know, it just it's so much better if you go out there and get someone that you can talk to that you trust and rely on. So we appreciate you emphasizing that on the on the podcast, too. Obviously, behind you, I love your uh, icon and uh, logo behind me. Talk to me about how you decided to set up your business. What's your business plan? How are you doing uh, with your business that you just started? Oh, yes, sir. Um, between the lines, physical therapy uh, geared towards, you know, seeing viewing everybody as an athlete. Everybody in some shape or form can be an athlete, try to move better, feel better. And we kind of follow this model of reset relearn, reinforce, where we reset the muscle with manual therapy techniques, relearn how to properly move. And just like everything in life, we learn through stress, whether we stress our brain in school, whether we stress to lift muscle, stress our muscles with lifting weight, try to, you really learn when you put the body under some type of stress to learn a correct pattern. Um, and that, and then with that, you know, uh, we, we are a cash based physical therapy clinic where we allot an hour of treatment time, potentially more in case a patient needs it, to, to truly try to tap into all three of those facets of resetting the muscle, relearning, and reinforcing. And uh, the belief behind that is, one, that, that, that time, we are, we are able to build this therapeutic alliance, and I'm not having to send you to an aid or, um, or you know, have to hurry up and get you on the table before because I have to see somebody here in 20 minutes. Um, I, I firmly don't believe that that model works, um, especially for something a little more severe. I, I also believe that to avoid PT burnout, you know, seeing 18, 20 people a day, five days a week becomes a lot. And then how, how am I going to be, give myself, give my patient the best version of myself day in and day out if I'm say about two or three o'clock, I am burnt out because I've already seen 14, 15 people. Like, yeah. So then also, you know, uh, not being dictated by insurance as far as what, what we can treat, how we can treat it kind of avoids, you know, falling into a, a pattern um, where everybody gets the same type of treatment because every injury is unique. 
every person is unique. What I do for a baseball player for a shoulder may be different than a mom with a shoulder shoulder issue, right? Yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah. Who has never thrown a baseball or a softball in her life? You know, it's a, it's a lot different. Um, yeah, I, I just think the the model allows for you know less treatment sessions, which ultimately can e- equate to less. Uh, a less of less of a cost burden on the patient um, versus going through insurance because you're getting more bang for your buck within that hour versus those 20 30 minute sessions oh yeah I, I, I like I used to run help run a therapy business and that was always a, a big deal with us is, is trying to get you know the, the work in uh, in the length of time and trying to make money because the money versus uh, the reimbursement rate, with you know, insurance is just horrible. It's like you, you can't hardly make a living off of it. So I'm amazed that this is your 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 model because I think it's exactly what they need to actually make it better. What you just said as far as individual care, I, I don't feel like I'm rushed. You're not doing six people, and I'm like he's not even caring about me. So what you talked about there, I think that's phenomenal. I think you guys will have great success with that because people are going to come to you because they love what you do and how you treat them. You treat them as they're important and you give them the care that they need. And that, that's phenomenal as well. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah. And another thing is like, you know, insurance doesn't reimburse for injury prevention. So what, so we got to wait till somebody's hurt to see them when we could do things to help them, you know, create a pattern uh, and improve motor, motor skills and motor control. And as far as cutting, so they don't tear an ACL on the soccer field, you know, so they don't, don't blow out a quad or something along, along those lines. We have to legit wait um, until somebody's hurt to, for them for insurance to reimburse. I, I think I think the healthcare system at times is very flawed. Well, yeah, you, you look at the insurance. Almost everything we do is after the fact. But yet, I talk mm-hmm. to people like you in other uh, areas, like even lifting weights. That I lift weights and I lift wrong, I tear, I rip, I do things. You know, everything in sports is about you know doing it the correct way that that isn't going to pull or injure yourself, and that keeps them even from going. So you'd think they would love these ideas and really come alongside of you and maybe even help you do that because you're saving them money. You know, you're yep. saving people from going to see them. So that might be an avenue to to pursue, uh, and all the different techniques that you use to heal, and you use a lot of them. Uh, what do you think is the most important part of that work? What do you do the most? What do you love to do the most? Are they different? What do you think there as far as what do you use to heal the most, do you think? I think the relatability, just the the social component that comes with this PT patient alliance is, is a great healing, um, healing uh, concept. Just being able to relate to the patient, meet them where they are, make them feel heard, it's going to get patient buy-in where they're going to feel like, okay, yes, I am going to get better. Yes, they're, they're truthful. They were real. They were genuine. Okay, I can, I can trust them. I can, I can trust that I'm not going to hurt myself even though, even though I have, haven't jumped in six months. I am going to be okay because they're knowledgeable. They trust it. They trust the process. They know the healing process. He says it may hurt a first few times, but as soon as I get going, the pain will subside because now I'm lear- I'm relearning how to do it. So that whole relatability part of it is huge because I've been on that side of the training table. I was on it a lot, especially early on in my playing career. I was on that training table a lot, so I definitely understand and and know like the frustration that comes behind it. But it's like I just can relate to him. It's like, hey, I've been there. I know it sucks to miss out. But honestly, it's better to miss one game than go out there again, re-injure it. Now we're talking about now you've done made it a grade two, grade three tear, and now we're sitting out three, four, five games. And in high school, that's half your season. Yeah, yeah. No, I think in everything we do, the relational trust is extremely important. And I, I, the whole thing we've talked about, I just love what you're doing. I love how you're doing it and the emphasis you put on it, especially the mental health side. Uh, I think that's critical in every aspect because, like you said, it's going to show throughout your life. Everything you go to try to do, if we don't take care of that area, it can impact you. So I want to thank you for coming on. I'd love to have another one with you some other time where we can Sorry. spend more time about each of the subjects that we cover. We kind of just highlighted them. But you have a wealth of knowledge and experience, and I think it was great uh, to get you on here. And I think you're going to help a lot of people that listen to this podcast. So I thank you for doing that.
I appreciate it, Hitch. Yeah, I have to use your call sign. I appreciate it, appreciate it, Hitch. Uh, no, it was That's great. Awesome. I, I love the fact that you know you're doing this and and the mission and vision behind behind the homes. Uh, I I love it. And let me know if there's anything that I can do to help further, you know, empower this vision. <laughs>